Babylon Mobile. 2013 wrap up on film. Yeah. Fucking get in there. Joining me now, uh, Dan Anderson here. Logan Bose. Uh, Sydney Sawyer. Anybody else on the film team? No one else on the film team? Yeah. You see how we do. Yeah. Talking about, um, well, to start with, Film and Mobile 2013. What, uh, what jumps out at you? As, uh, uh, I think uh, what I like the most is uh, just the amount of projects that have been coming through here. Uh, we oh, don't want to talk about that. Come on. Oh, well, no, like... <laughs> Oh, I want to talk about it. I'm ha that's that, that that's money and work and experience for a lot of people. Sure. That's good. Not does it fall under the agents of mobile film? No, yeah, no, 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 maybe yeah, so. Yeah, maybe that, so. Yeah, it does. That falls under that. But there's also other good projects. You know, a lot of other projects have been going on. We've had Infinity Girls, which you're working on. Um, Definitely not talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> talk about that uh, next you know, year. I, I finally started my first documentary with Sarah. Uh, yeah. It's out the narrative really this summer. Hopefully, we'll be finishing up uh, at least shooting and start posts on that next year. Cool. Because uh, we're taking time off. Uh, I know Carson uh, with Limo Ride, He's uh, they're really getting into the final. Yeah, what's the ETA on that, you know? Uh, they're really locking into a final cut for post and grading soon. Cool. Um, so I think I they're putting to together like a trailer so they can put something out for uh, festivals and whatnot. So I, I think we should start seeing more from that next year. Awesome. Um, so they're done shooting. There's no more because they had to do some pickup stuff. So. Right. And that really kind of began – uh, right before that began, like late last year, mm -hmm. and then yeah, because I worked on that for about a day. I was there on a New Year's morning in the Gulf of Mexico, freezing, <laughs> getting the water shots, being the most expensive shot in the film. It's like, don't mess this up either, because we cannot redo this one thing. It's like, great. So that's going to be exciting. Uh, you know, the Phoenix Rises movie ended up in uh, red boxes across the country. In the, the red country. box, yeah. If you can find it. Mm -hmm. Because everyone's written that one disc. Apparently, that's yeah, doing really well in the red box. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. According to the director, it got bit torrented heavily. <laughs> really, I haven't even looked for it on there. I'll look I, for it. You know, supposedly, yeah, there were like a whole lot of seeds for you know. Wow. I got word today there was a potent low-frequency beam attack on a group of scientists, <laughs> affecting their beam. Twelve dead to a coma. But now, anyway, keep this between us. Travel to Kansas City, meet with Dr. Roberts, and let him brief you on the Phoenix program and the dire situation we face. Your country needs you. Welcome to Kansas City. Where did you get this? This is, this is Russia. They yeah, were traced it back to a group out of Russia calling themselves Transcom. Do you guys feel this severity? I need to know everything they've ever done. I need to know who they are, where they are. I need to know how many freckles she has on her head. Give me back the device you used to break those kind of clubs. I don't have it! It's back in Ecuador! I have one with the gates. Silence now will compromise the mission. Your emotion is the compromise. So, um, what that's, else? Well, uh, there's that. Should we talk about Hollywood? Uh, well, no, hold on. We got broken balance. Broken Balance is still seeking financing, but it's everything set up. We've this had began this past year. This began year. last year. Last year? Last year. Well, like, we can't talk about that then. Exactly. Well, I think um, we, we actually started shooting this year in right. February. Uh, then we had to take a break because of other projects going on in Mobile that some of the crew had to work on. And now we... Yeah, I know. Yeah, and now that's we've problem. just been uh, sort of waiting around... Uh, 
for those who don't know, Broken Balance is a project I'm producing, which is a, it's actually meant for Cambodia, but it's based in America, based in Alabama, Mobile, Alabama. Um, it's, it's a very unique story, and I do, there's not enough time in this recording to tell you about it. Uh, it took two hours to explain it to me by the director. That's how long it is. But it's, right. it's a very unique thing. Now, is uh, it a movie or is it a series? It's a movie. Okay. It, it's, a, it's a franchise of a movie. It's oh, like the start oh of a my. franchise okay. of a Cambodian film franchise. It, 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 it's a foreign movie. Let's put it that way. Right. Foreign movie shot in Alabama. And it's tough to find finance for people that want to invest in a foreign movie in this town. If you got you know, a movie that's for the American market, it's probably a lot easier, but right. not the other way around. So we're, uh, it's an uphill battle, but we're still working on it. What young man on your mouth and those days and come? And why you don't know that car from playing clear? No, the teeth sound the peer. When times I'm a kid, you can walk near. Right by back high. I still find each day too short for all the thoughts I want to think. And all the walks I want to take. For all the friends. I want to see I never imagined how closely those words would play into the course of my life That's another movie that, that's being done locally. There's that. You got Infinity Girls. Uh, hey Ride like a 2? Huh? Hey Ride 2? Hey Ride 2. Year? They are yeah. working on that. I actually just met with uh, Taryn Parsons today. Uh, the director of Hey Ride 2? Did, yeah. It's, I feel like an ass. Is his last name Parsons? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I thought it was. I was like, I, I thought I was thinking of a, a 70s singer. Uh <laughs> That's my bad. Uh, yeah, I, I met with him. He's uh, he was there. They're working on the color right now. Yeah, they're very and foreign post. Looks yeah. very good. Cool. Looks very good. I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, what else is happening in town? We had Convergence recently. Convergence. The Mudbrook film. I've heard uh, Oculus. Sorry, Oculus, which is uh, I forget the name of the production company. Mike Flanagan's company. They made, they filmed last year over across the bay. They're the ones that did Somnia this year. I heard Oculus. I'm starting to hear good things about that because it's actually making the festival circuit. And uh, it's starting to get good word of mouth, so I don't know what the, what's up with the district on that, but hopefully next year we'll start seeing that'll probably get. Uh, we were talking about this earlier, so I'm going to bring it back up. It's kind of inside baseball, but um, we started to see more productions come here, and this is from a crew standpoint. It's been interesting because it's kind of it's, it's a nice little you know little gold rush because if you're interested in getting into film and filmmaking and learning things, this is a great this is. The, over the next year is probably going to be your last year to kind of really get your foot in the door because I have to go. Yeah, Ground Zero. Ground Zero has been going on. I mean, I I got on my first film. I got on with Sons of Liberty a year ago, um, which I'm hoping that one comes. I think that's yep. coming out next year yep. too. Um, and that I I kind of saw what was coming and wanted to get my foot in the door in the film industry here. So um, I was hearing earlier. I don't remember who was saying this conversationally. 
eight films that we know of on the books for 2014 in Mobile. Eight eight, I was hearing six, I think. I okay. mean, six at least right. that, you know, are pretty. I mean, it could be more than that easily. Right. But sure. um, we're looking at next year that if, you know, like I said, this is an inside baseball thing. But if you're a local crew, you could probably be employed full time next year and make good money. <laughs> You know, you know, so and that's good. And if you're and if anybody's actually interested in uh, getting involved, uh, I, I don't want enough calling it the film scenes, really the correct word, yeah. but uh, doing uh, professional film work here, you, you need to go to uh, the mobile film office and register uh, and with those guys. And start getting your foot in the door that way. Yeah. Uh, and start talking to people, because I think after next year, after 2014, if you haven't got your foot in that door already, yeah. it's going to be a lot harder to break in. Sure. Those positions, crew, they're starting to train. They're willing to train people that are willing to work. And there's going to be a point where that's between the locals that have already got their, you know, have already done the work here, and people that might possibly move here to, to fill those positions. Right. It's going to be a lot harder to get in. So, well, getting back to the indies, the local indies. I know uh, Fighting Owl Films have a short that just went live. There's a Night of the Krampus. Night of the Krampus. Night of the Krampus. Yeah. yeah, I saw it today. Actually, it's on YouTube to watch. Yeah, by the time you hear this, it will have already aired on TV and some kind of local screening, if I'm not mistaken. Nice. But it's on YouTube to see now, Night of the Krampus, K-R-A-M-P-U-S. Yeah. Check it out. Um, and follow-up to the Night Shift, yeah, their yeah. first feature. Uh, Night of the Krampus is more of a short. but. Uh, and I saw I'm having a Night of the Krampus right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said that because I didn't want to say that about you. <laughs> I was um, going to say, uh, I, I saw his other short film, Cupid, at the South Alabama Film Festival, which is yeah. a nice little, yeah, very made, made adorable little movie. Yeah, it made the rounds of festivals. Santa? been a rash of missing kids in the area. All on the proverbial naughty list. No sign of forced entry. Santa's gone postal. You're not far off. He's called Krampus. Santa rewards the good kids. Krampus punishes the wicked. group out of South Alabama that, that the strangers at the at the state fair I mean you know it, it's amazing to see these kids coming up coming up talent, strong with their know, student with talent film. you know yeah. that's great doesn't all this scare you guys doesn't want scares it's like we all want these amazing things for ourselves. There's a whole world of obstacles out there just waiting for us. We have this preconceived notion that we have to have everything planned out. So I guess we're all just dreamers then, huh? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, as far as films, there was a South Alabama Film Festival, also the Fairhope Film Festival yeah. at their inaugural That's right. thing. That's right. I was actually doing a write-up for it for my mobilian, but I stopped because I realized I, I, it was four days. I was there for one. I saw three movies out of 40. They had 40 feature right. films at this four-day festival. Big stuff, in too. Big stuff. Oh, great big they're stuff. They're not playing the local regional. They're, they're going for best in the world. Their, their tagline was it. best of the best. Yeah. And basically what I determined was they were trying to get the best movies out to get as much people out to sort of – you know, establish themselves. It's smart. Sure. It's a smart play. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the of the three movies I saw, they were all great. And that was just three of the forty. I can't wait to see what they do next year. That's Trey. What is the what is the deal with the Mobile Bay Film Scramble? Because, as you know, I directed several of those films, and uh, yeah, and I'm waiting for the next. <laughs> Well, the, uh, scramble myself. The latest so. one is still in progress. The due date for that's the the Deacon Boone scramble. Uh, the the deadline is December twenty third. Okay. Well, I'd like to give some credit to Trey Lane because you know it's amazing how many 
these people that started filming these little film scrambles are now working on feature films. It was a bit of a gateway drug, wasn't it, for yeah, the it actual was. film yeah. industry? So what the hell are you doing? The first one's always free, dog. <laughs> it is. Um, what, what else? I know there's more. I hate to, Soul Taker. We're not gonna. T- we're not gonna talk about Soul Taker. We we go way down a rabbit hole on that one. Yeah, Dan and I will do a whole podcast on just Soul Taker at some point. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So does that mean there's a point where we're talking about Nicolas Cage, or do we skip over we that? Uh, yeah, we going we're talking about the national. He was. Now, we, now we're, talking we're talking about national films in Mobile, not national just films national films, films, right? Yeah. We can talk about national films at the end and be brief about it because there are some important films. That what said, Tokarev, Tokarev was Nicholas a big Cage deal around here. Yeah. Was and then in we had uh, Somnia, which is in progress. Yeah, featuring who's in Somnia? Thomas Jane. Thomas Jane. Um, Katie Sackoff, who was also in Somnia. Thomas Jane, Katie Sackoff, and I'm missing one person. Kate Bosworth, there you go. And then also The Prince, which has been talked about as a Bruce Willis vehicle, when really it's a 50 cent vehicle. It's a 50 cent and Featuring Bruce Willis and And Rain. And John Cusack. John Cusack, and there's one more. There's someone else in that. Gia Marini or something? Is that a porn star? I don't know about these things. What? (laughs) Okay. Uh. Someone told me John Goodman was in The Prince. No, I haven't heard that. Okay. That's how easily things oh, get okay. confused about all this. No, the big thing, and no one in Mobile is going to really know who this person is, but Rain is in is one of the big stars in The Prince, and that's... So who is that? He is a, like, huge Korean pop star. Like, he's, no he's big time. If you ever saw any movie in the acting, is actually, and it's pretty good at it. If you ever saw Ninja Assassin... I, I know of it, yeah. Yeah, it's he's the lead actor in that. Okay, so that's wow. the only thing Americans might know him from. But he's he's pretty big internationally, so which is, is going to be is interesting because he's probably actually going to be one of the biggest stars on the film really? as far as the way it's going to end up being marketed in a lot of places. So yeah. is there a Mobile Asian but invasion no one's going gonna, on right now? Yeah, right. Yeah. But no one in Mobile is going to know who he is. It's funny. Right? Like, he could just walk in he here. Walk in like, right oh, now, we would have no idea. That movie, that's cute. Have no clue. Is that the Gangnam Style guy? No, that well, is not I mean, Psy. They yeah. all they all have one syllable names. <laughs> Come Sorry. on, this is why no. City doesn't get invited very often. Rain is not Psy. Psy is not Rain. You do not question any the other one uh, biggish movies happened in Mobile last year. I'm in Mobile, that's you know I in don't know. Mobile. I mean, we might have nailed. We it. already talked about Oculus, but that, that Oculus was kind of like the first one that started the movement. Yeah, you yeah. know that was like end of 2012, beginning of 2004, or excuse me, 2013, was yeah. it not? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like like Dan said, it's a good time if you want to get involved. Now for sure, is the time for sure. Now to get in while you I'm, can. I'm intrigued because I wasn't going to talk about film beyond local regional, but you're saying we can talk about important films. There of are. 2013. Now I want to know what are your important films? Give me three important My films important, from the here's past the thing. year. Here's the way I put it, and real quick, if I can do a plug, uh, I have a radio show Sundays at 2 p.m. on Mama Bill and Radio. It's Indeed. called the Logan and Tony Movie Show. My partner Tony is not here; he's working. But we review movies, and locally, we always review what's coming out of the Crescent and then whatever the other big movie is at the So what the you're saying theater. is you're in a position to really tell me the three important movies of the last year. Yes. Do tell. Real quick. One, the most important movie of the year is 12 Years a Slave. It played at the Crescent, it played at the Crescent for three weeks, uh, and when I saw it, Max came out, because everyone knows Max. He comes out, does, does a little introduction. He said, right. this is going to be American history's version of Schindler's List. And I already had a lot of hype in my head because I'd heard so much about it. And I was worried that I hyped it up so much that it was going to be a letdown. Right. And then after Max said it's going to be the Schindler's List of American history, I was like, it's doomed. <laughs> and right. no, it was it exceeded my it, expectations. Really? Everything was great about it. My only reservation is Brad Pitt was kind of out of place. But whatever it gets nominated for, it's going to win. Okay. Now, it's unbelievable. Okay, that's number one on your list out of order. Wait. Oh. Trey Lane, did you see that movie? I didn't, and I really regret it right. because, like, after it left the Crescent is when I started hearing great things about it. I mean, I heard things about it while it was there. It, it, it kind of got painted, and this is a weird joke, but it's like it's it, it's pretty much the real life Django story without the violent retribution mm-hmm. at the end to make yeah. you feel better about all the bad things that happened. <laughs> yeah, it's yes, it's historically yeah, it's it scary. is as close to a perfect movie as you will ever see. 
Like everything about it is as close to perfect as you can see. Jesus, that said, Logan. I know. Tell I, me that I, now I'm that sorry. I can't go see it at the Crescent. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm I believe it's still one, one kind of, t- and it's kind of turned into punch bowl in this. And I still love the movie, by the way. The only thing that got to me, and this is this is a film nerd thing, definitely. I love Hans Zimmer, you know, when it comes to score. He pretty much reused half of his Inception score for this. Like, it, it just yeah. completely lifted whole cues. Like, and I know there's some... It, it's I miss people. that cue. I, 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 I'm not good with soundtracks, though. No, but. I heard it, and I'm just like, it's exactly from Inception, because of blah, blah, blah. I mean, they're basically the same story. It's a guy trying to get back to his family. It's the exact same story, pretty much, so... Yeah. I'm being well. a smart ass, by the way. <laughs> All right, so what else you that's got? That's it. Well, here's the thing. To me, that's the best and most important movie of the year. It's not my favorite, though. What is your favorite movie of the year? Technically, my favorite movie of the year is Francis Ha. Uh, it, another one that I should have seen but haven't yeah. yet. Uh, I don't think it was released around here because it was very independent. It was made the festival circuit. Uh, it stars it. Greta Gerwig. It was co-written by Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach, the director, who right. previously did Greenberg and The Squid and the Whale, both of which I hated. Uh, so I didn't have high hopes for this, and it was just a fun, happy movie. After I got done watching it, I just felt happy about it. I just, I was like, I had a smile on my face. It was great. Greta Gerwig probably gonna get nominated for an Oscar. I don't know if she's gonna win because, uh, uh, what's her face, Kate Blanchett and Blue Jasmine's probably gonna win that. She's right. really good. Um, but Francis Howe was one of my favorite movies of the year. Okay, what's number um, three on our list? It, I'm gonna have to go with uh, favorite again, and that's Kings of Summer. Which played at the Crescent. I don't even know what the hell that is. It's a coming of age story. It's about three kids who run away from home and they build a house in the middle of the woods and escape from their parents. It, it, it's beautifully shot. It's it like it, the way that it's shot. It has a very indie sensibility to it, but it's the story itself is like something you would see in a sort of a typical comedy. Except it's extremely funny, way funnier than I expected. I expected it to be kind of indie, sort of like, oh, it's one of these movies. And it was just, it, it made me laugh out loud a lot. But it's beautifully shot. It's one of my favorite movies of the year. Um, so that and Francis Ha are very close. That's heavy. As, as far as, like, on a mass appeal, as far as, like, if you're trying to please the masses here, Gravity. Oh, God. Gravity, yeah. You didn't like Gravity, Sydney? Science nerd in me got me. Wait, what'd she say? Science I nerd in her. Shut it down. Too well, scientifically inaccurate. Well, Neil deGrasse Tyson thinks so too. What? But good company. Sydney. That didn't stop me from being on the edge of my seat for an hour and thirty minutes. And also, I don't like three D. I told people if you don't see it in three D, you're cheating yourself. It's visually stunning. Well, if if a, if a director shoots a movie in three D, do not see it any other way. Yeah. If it's something retrofitted to 3D or whatever, screw yeah, that. Yeah, that's but, nonsense. But if the director makes it in 3D, that's the way you're supposed to see it. And yeah. I, I agree with that. I'm not yeah. big on it, but if it was made that way by a director that I give a damn about, yeah. I will see it that way. And I and I know it's scientifically inaccurate, but there are certain movies where you can and you can't suspend your belief. Right. This is one of those where I was like, I'll let it slide. Right. Because it was, it was tense and... Being lost in space is one of the most terrifying things, if you think about it. No one really thinks about it, but just being floating in space, you can't do anything. You're done. Right. And the fact that this is a whole story, it was very – it was it was engaging. I enjoyed it a lot. Well, I love that our – I'm going to say our official Mod Mobilian top four movies of the year, four movies I haven't seen, <laughs> big film nerd myself. And given by one person. Given by one person. <laughs> well, you're our authority. You're our in-house authority. I on am. One of. What was important in film this year. Yeah. Is there anything else floating in the ether that hasn't been mentioned film-wise? I'd like to, I'd like to throw on credit, and this is an, uh, one of the films I enjoyed this year. Uh, I really liked uh, Josh Whedon's Much Ado About Nothing that they showed I the president, which is one of the few places that yet. did a theatrical release of it. They had people driving in from out of state to see that in theater because New Orleans wasn't playing it, and we were playing it. And like, I think they only didn't have it for a week. And I'm, I'm kind of a Shakespeare nerd, so I enjoy that stuff too. And, you know, it's seeing Josh Whedon with his normal cast of characters like, we're just going to have fun for a couple weeks and make a Shakespeare movie. Okay. Like, it, yeah. that movie was fun. You could tell they had fun making it. You know, I would definitely put it on my top ten list. I haven't sat down and probably thought about a top ten list as much as you, yeah. although I'm right there with you <laughs> on 12 Years a Slave and Gravity. But um, I, had, I had a really good time with it. Well, Trey Lane, what about your favorite movie? 
film, oh, whatever. This is where everyone rolls their eyes and groans when I say, holy motors. I bet it was, it was Grown Ups 2. <laughs> holy Motors was the best movie of the year. Grown Ups 2. Watch it on Netflix. <laughs> they pixelated the wieners for you, so you don't have to look at wieners. But it's on Netflix. Holy Motors, check it out. That's my movie of the year. Doc, what you got? So what's, what's the story with your film? Try your doing oh a film. Oh, God. We started shooting December 2nd. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be awesome. Oh, it's going to be incredible. It's going to be incredible. Will I be alive? Hello, I'm Trey Lane. And I'm Timothy Dixon. As you may or may not be aware, Alabama has become a hotspot for numerous film projects. We're fortunate to have been involved in many of those projects. And now we're prepared to bring our own vision to the screen. The movie we're making is called Infinity Girls. It's a live action sci fi thriller feature film being made in Mobile, Alabama. Not to mention the robot. The robot? Now when you watch the trailer, and you get a sense of the world that we're building, you'll see what a fun and exciting project this is for all of us. You wanna watch the trailer? Yeah, let's watch the trailer. We'll remember, in time, we know who we are. Maybe that's enough for now. Not for me. Are we dreaming? I guess we'll know that when we wake up. Good morning. Prepare for your morning shower. Please report to room five. Follow the green line. So today's the day. Whatever that means. Three minutes remaining in shower. What that means is we're getting out. Today we're going to focus on memory. Memories are the key to life, to identity. They can be constructed just like anything else. You need memories to learn when it comes to knowledge and behavior. Kissing. Please do not be alarmed. Beth Omega is a service drone under our control. It is perfectly safe. 